Hello, I am Jefferson Vita Jr., manager of the Siemens Building Products Technical Department Hub for Latin America. I would like to share with you my first video of the Tech Tips series regarding our product lines for fire detection and alarm and building automation systems. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. And please don't forget to hit that like button. Today I am going to talk about the Cerberus Pro Compact FC922 and FC924 Fire Alarm Control Panel. It is an awesome system and I am really proud to have been working with the UL version of this system since its debut in 2012. More specifically, in this video I want to show you some common trouble scenarios involving the addressable detection line called CNET and how to resolve them. Some of these problems can auto-correct themselves without any action of the system's operator, but others may require intervention. Let's jump right in. First, let me show you my system's configuration. It is a simple configuration with four devices addressed from one to four, and some other non-addressable devices such as audible bases, system relays, etc. One recommendation here is to include the device's address in the customer label text field in the configuration. This helps a lot when performing system maintenance later on. I have also configured my system for self-restoration of trouble and supervision conditions. This means that, when the trouble and or supervision causing event has or have been restored, the system will return to its normal condition without the operator's intervention of acknowledging the event and resetting the system. Our first problem case is an open loop in a Class A configuration. First, you can see a trouble-free system and I will induce an open circuit trouble. You can see the trouble coming in, as expected, and upon fixing the issue the panel self-restores to its normal condition. Next, I created a short circuit condition on the loop and I have no isolators on my circuit. This means that the entire circuit will shut itself off for self-protection. And in addition to the short circuit event, I have all my devices on the loop missing and a few other trouble events for my audible bases, some relays, etc. For you folks that work in the field, no need to say that it can be a nightmare to pinpoint locations of such condition. By the way, all of our current devices have an awesome technology called ISO technology, in which the CNET can be installed in a class X configuration and a short condition on the loop is pinpointed exactly on the section where it is located while the system does not lose one single detector. This is really awesome due to its robustness, reliability, time, and cost-saving results. But I will talk more about ISO technology in a future video. So as you can see, even after no longer having the short circuit condition on the loop, the system's troubles remain even after I have reset the system. Remember the self-preservation characteristics of the CNET design. In this case, I have to manually restart the CNET circuit, wait for the process to finish, and finally reset the system to restore my panel to its normal condition. It is important to understand this, as it can become a troubleshooting nightmare if you believe you have fixed the problem, but the panel is still showing a short circuit trouble and you forgot that you have to restart the actual circuit. Next, I created a device missing condition on the loop, and it is very straightforward. Upon reinstalling the missing device, the system goes back to a normal condition. In this next scenario, I created a duplicate address condition on the loop by repeating address 2. As you can see, I have a device missing trouble for my detector 4 and a duplicate address trouble on my panel, among others for the audible base. These events, along with the address showing in the customer text, helps the technician piece together what is happening and fix the problem. The new device with address 2 was not programmed so there is no customer text associated with it. If you do not have the addresses easily available in the customer text, the troubleshooting process may take longer.
In this case, as in the short circuit scenario, after fixing the problem, the system did not self-restore. Again, as we did before, just go in the applicable CNET loop and restart the circuit. And finally, the last scenario in today's video is when the program device type doesn't match what is physically installed on the circuit. I removed an OH921 and inserted a OHC941 with the correct address. As you can see, a wrong device type trouble shows up, along with its associated audible base trouble. In this case, upon fixing the problem, the system also self-restores back to its normal condition. This is it for today. I hope this helps you see how the CNET behaves in different conditions and how to react when intervention is needed. Please let me know if you would like to see more CNET situations or other topics with this or other Siemens BP products. See you soon!